some air roots off this dragon fruit flying up this moringa. That's so cool. I didn't even notice that. So does it get nutrients from the I think it's moringa, like a stabilizer. Oh, it, but yeah, okay. I mean, it might pull Kind of like a like here. a passion fruit vaunt those those like things that come off. Kind of like tendrils. Tendrils. Like air roots. How oh, cool, dude. That's crazy. That is crazy. It's got to climb somehow. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dave Stone again, and I'm here with another exciting episode of Develop Awesome Skills. And today I'm with Craig McDonald, who you guys probably saw his video uh, with Seamus and Brandon from Greeny's Garden. What, you're this year? I was in the spring, yeah, like March or March. maybe April or something. April. Yeah. And I'm actually, we're under the canopy of his Moringa trees right now. Um, you have four big trees here that you originally planted about two, a little over two years ago now? Yeah. So these ones, like this one right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna right pull now. this off the tripod so I can start showing you guys this stuff. It was one of the original ones uh, that we planted, and it's a pretty good size trunk. So this is was from seed right in the ground. And I want you to notice something, guys. Like I don't know if you could really see the uh, the volume of these wood chips here, but this is we're we're a solid it's at least. Three, three feet, two to three feet off the ground. The driveway's over there under my tripod. So the driveway's down there, and I'll show you when we get on the driveway, you guys can kind of see um, what this is. But actually, let me show you that real quick. What do you think? You think wood chips are the most important thing? I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, it's so if we- Pretty much the key to uh, success. I mean, growing the moringas helped a lot to shade, and then the wood chips help a lot to, you know, conserve water, and like the soil is like so rich now. And, uh, you know. The whole is a piece of cake. Yes, you're finding that too. So when I you. I don't even own a pickaxe. It's so much easier now. Once you put wood chips on your yard, guys, the clay softens up and you just sh shovel goes right in. Like butter. So. This one, there's another moringa. So this one's only about a, a little over a year old. From seed. Right. So all the moringas, so I have 10 of them, just in this area of the yard, that were all directly from seed in the ground. Like I basically soaked them in water for like 24 hours and then planted them, you know, in a handful of compost, that's it. Did you mix in native soil with it? I literally took one shovel full of dirt out put uh, like potting soil in there and put the seed and then watered it and they grew fine. Now these ones, the other six, the newer ones, uh, I actually dug about a two foot deep hole, um, but not very wide, just like with the smaller shovel and then just mixed in native and there was, I had like some compost worm castings and uh, planted those ones and these ones are growing even better than the original ones. But yeah, it was all just directly seed in the ground. So I'd have like two or three seeds per hole, and then I just cut the losers at the soil soil level and let the winter let okay. the winter run. Cool. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you can see. Maybe, I mean, they're probably at least thirty feet up. There. Yeah, I got to give you guys the scope of this, and I don't know if you could see on the camera, but I'll try to get some good shots. But there's so many butterflies in here, yeah. bees, hummingbirds. Uh, you definitely created a microclimate here for sure. There's a lot of couple entrances to this canopy, but oh, there's a butterfly. Yeah, cool. And a bee. They love these flowers. Do you get a lot of scent? Like you, you know, you get the the flower smell. Uh, I mean, the moringa. I don't know what they really. They don't really smell. Sometimes they have a sweet aroma. Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on in this yard. Yeah, there is. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. So we have the young, all different stages of the seed pods on the tree too. So you can see like the flowers, obviously. And then you have like the pod when it first forms, a little bit bigger, and then a little bit bigger. And then you have like in, up in here, there's like some of the older ones that were from the spring crop that are 
hardened and just hanging still like up in there and this is this is actually a rufa oh yeah you got some <laughs> rufas running around here too yeah so there's all kinds of vines just creeping up crawling through the moringas dragon fruit here um yeah, so you guys can see how he's, I mean, you're, did you ever study permaculture or you just kind of like... No, just, you know, got, I really liked, I, what amazed me originally was how fast these Moringa's trees can grow. Watching videos of Jeff Lawton and... Oh, okay. Um, I mean, just, you know, there's a wealth of information out there. Totally. Um, I mean, you can just get addicted watching video after video yeah. for like months and months, yeah. yeah. You pretty much took the permaculture design course without taking the permaculture design course in a right. way. <laughs> yeah. So there's, I've watched a lot of videos um, and then, you know, just learning by doing it too. It's like that's the best way to learn is to try something. Absolutely. You know, try and grow something. And you're finding what likes to be planted. I mean, also when you guys just notice, look how close he's planting everything together. Yeah, everything's, you know, within, you know, four feet of each other or less. So like right there is a three in one actually. He's doing relatively well. Uh, the dwarf peach, so there's a bonanza peach over there that is not very happy. I don't think it's getting enough sun. Mm. Um, but then this is a beauty plum and a desert gold peach. And we actually, these are all, basically everything in the yard is only about a year old uh, from being planted. And we got probably 30 desert gold peaches. Awesome. This March or April. Or um, but still have not gotten any plums. But yeah, uh, your peach is looking beautiful. They're they're just looking so pretty. Yeah, but these uh, no yellowing at all. The moringa is like the ideal, you know, canopy tree for tropicals. So like avocados, mangoes. It's they're great to like get you started, and then also to eat. I mean, we harvest so much moringa. We put it on everything we eat. Um, from soup to whatever. Do you dry for the powder too? You pretty much just eat fresh. We eat fresh and powdered. Okay. So we, the way we do it is we'll like, if a limb's getting in my way, you know, I'll just start picking them off and make like bunches. We'll rubber band them and then we rinse them outside, shake them off really good and then just hang them inside, upside down. Yeah. And then after that, we'll just kind of take all the bunches get as many of the stems out as we can and then just throw it in a blender and that's it awesome so it's pretty simple and it's great for you know nutrition but you know it's a nice like earthy flavor to add to food mm -hmm. um, so if you're gonna cook meat or anything it tastes really good on anything it. yeah um, so and even like I'll make our own salad dressings um, and I'll just use that as like the, the, the herb component of yeah it, you know? awesome so, so show us a little bit more of what you got under here. Uh, let's see. If you go through here. So we have a few like volunteer moringas popping up all over the place. Um, so, and it's not like they're an invasive weed because if you're worried, a lot of people have asked, oh, they're just gonna pop up everywhere. Like it's not a big deal. Like you can just pull it out if you don't want it. Mm -hmm. So there you can see the seed and the taproot of this little guy. So nature just dropped a seed and this is what happens in the forest, guys. It's like a, you know, everything mulches on its own. He's gonna start getting it to mulch on its own here in the next year or two, but, but right now he's been mulching heavily, but that seed just germinated right in the mulch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just go down, you know, a couple, couple inches and yeah. I mean, that's- That's amazing. Yeah, it's already starting to break down. There's all kinds of, uh, we got millipedes and and worms and all kinds of crazy stuff in here. And you were saying that you hand water. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> it's like a meditation. But it's actually, it's, it's easier now because a lot of the berms have been kind of degraded over mm -hmm. the time. And so like when I'm watering one tree, I'm watering like four other ones. Mm. Cause it's all packed into this area. So even though there's probably about 40 trees in here, they all kind of get watered together. So I just kind of do it by zone, put the hose near a couple trees and it waters all of them over the course of, you know, 10, 15 minutes or whatever. Oh yeah, that's great. And then you just, I'm- And you just got this little guy to kind of spray 
uh, help you water a little bit. Yeah, so that kind of turns this into like a rainforest, you know, because it's... <laughs> it probably gets pretty humid under here. It's nice, and uh, especially right now, like the temperature just drops. Like it already dropped, you know, 10 degrees from being out in the sun, but it drops another 5, 10 degrees because it's like almost like a, a, swamp, a swamp cooler. Yeah, yeah, like a swamp cooler, right on. We got, uh, this is the Aravipa avocado. Now this Aravipa. has been in the ground only a year. And you know, I've, I've already killed one of these things and this one looks like it may hang on. But um, yeah, this is looking good. You got new growth. Yeah, so I think as long as you know the you got new growth, the leaves are looking great. Then, you know, the, uh, I, be they're okay. pretty scraggly though. They, uh, Seamus was saying that they pop out at the here. They're gonna start bushing. Right, a little bushing, and then I think you know it's really working on roots. It was just like so. This is the market. Yeah, it's been a year and a half in the ground, and this was a three-gallon, like a little tiny tree, even smaller than the Aravipa. Um, like if kind of what it was is this top part if if the if it ended here this that's what i planted a year and a half ago yeah and uh so this basically didn't grow at all until this may oh there's a hummingbird oh yeah uh, checking out the pomegranates over there <laughs> but yeah so it didn't even start growing until this may like it looked exactly the same kind of scraggly didn't grow at all just chilled for an entire year calendar year and you know it was putting on putting out roots maybe threw out a, a few little branches but then in may it just started crazy growth like you can see basically from right around here it starts looking a little bit different oh yeah and this whole top wow came out at the beginning of the summer and then since then it's just been putting on these little side branches too but these are so beautiful like these leaves are just so green yeah it's awesome massive massive leaves really cool so this you know like these the avocados definitely appreciate the shade in the summer from all and now you don't have to use any shade cloth because of the moringas right so last year you see i had these posts still on the ground this year they're just there for decoration i did not use any shade cloth and you see this was actually over the pumpkin the, the <laughs> oh, wow. avocado last year so the shade cloth was only about this high um last summer so but or two summers ago i guess because we're basically done with summer now but yeah i didn't do any shade cloth this year at all it was great it's very convenient and all the moringas have interlocked how many moringas do you have in here now uh so the main four are pretty much what you're looking at here is that one this one this is one of the original ones and it's not even that big the trunk isn't that big. I have one-year-old ones that are bigger than this one now. <laughs> wow. But, uh, like you can see even that one. Like yeah. This is kind of like the dwarf of the original four. Um, but it's still, dude, this is in a crucial spot on the west side of the yard. Yeah, you know, you're growing them specifically for microclimate. You're right. also eating. So a lot of these people, they're trying to cut them back at the base. And that's a common philosophy is to cut them at the base and let them pop back out the next year. But I'm finding if you let the trunks get big, you'll get way more growth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look how much, I mean, just off this like little. And did you chop this down last winter? Yeah, so this has actually been topped at, I mean, this was six feet, but we're standing on about, you know, two or three feet of mulch yeah. now. But <laughs> this was topped tw two years in a row. So every uh, February-ish, uh, so 2016 and this year 2017 I cut it it had nothing except a stump right at six feet Wow well I guess it's not six have feet. they they grown a lot in <laughs> diameter this year too probably yeah so this one hasn't really that much but the other ones definitely have they all kind of swell up and it's usually as they're growing for the in the summer I notice I look how gnarly this guy is too yeah so you can see he just kind of freaking puts on growth in all different spots and then the growth comes off of there and they just and the more you you cut it back the more fiercely it grows yeah the more you take the more it gives yeah it's amazing Look at those seed pods it just throws like throws branches out from anywhere it can <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> it's just like needs to grow yeah i mean it just gets my way i'll just snap it off you know <laughs> i mean you see how it curves like it it grows so fast that it grows towards the light. <laughs> so it'll be like, no, there's no light. It'll start curling. Yeah. Um, and then it'll actually work 
So like the loquat, for instance. So this, I thought for sure I was gonna have to use shade cloth for, but the all the branches are kind of gone now. But what this moringa did is this had sunlight and it was an open space about six months ago. So it come, it came straight out. All these different branches that are now gone would go out, down, and then out. And this one is kind of doing that still right here, but just like reaching for every little speck of sunlight and ended up shading my low quat perfectly, which this I just planted, which needs, as you, if you know about low quats, they need full shade the first year in the ground. And this thing did great with just Moringa as its shade cloth, basically. Yeah, it's looking really good. Yeah, so this looks better than my other low quad that almost died the first year. And this has only been in the ground for, you know, nine months or so. And what you got here? Oh, see, little... that's, so that's the Redlands variety white sapote. I know you usually see like the Sioux Bell or the Vernon at like Lowe's, Home Depot. So this is like a, a Florida variety that we got from Seamus. Um, and that was a three gallon, it grows pretty slow. Um, but it took the summer this year a lot better. So originally, last year, I thought it was about to die because a lot of the leaves, even with shade cloth, it crisped up pretty well. But it came back strong and then this year it is fine. So I'm finding the second year for everything is a lot, they're getting used to it a lot more. So they're a lot more acclimated. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, and the ring is definitely help. This is a little, this is a star fruit that is, you know, it's struggling a little bit. You can see some of the leaves are green. Does it need more light or is it like just... You know, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, it's looking pretty so, good, but yeah, you're right. I mean, some. I don't know if that is... a little is... bit like chlorotic, like it yeah. needs like iron or something. How do you feed your trees? Uh, well, the first year I was really, really good. Like I would foliar feed every two weeks. Um, I used... Uh, the 839 all the stuff that Seamus recommends um, and then this last year being the second year I did kind of a little bit of each like I used a lot of Jay Behringer's compost uh, Aztec gold okay so I used that as a top feeder uh, in March and in May and I kind of like split it up and then I would do 839 every other month so it's a little bit different this year but um, the first year you kind of kick it in. Do you ever put right. the stuff in the ground? You ever uh, feed with like the fish emulsion? Oh yeah, no, I, I still do that. Oh okay, so cool. I would do I would do that like once a month, once every two months. I would do a mix um, of liquid kelp, humic acid, and. Um, do you use fish emulsion? And fish emulsion. Right? Oh okay. Yeah. Awesome. So like I got I actually got it from uh, like a some hydroponic grow store. They had. The, humic acid powder that was like half the price so I'd mix that with water and uh, basically get that to um, the right consistency or whatever so I'd use the humic acid and then the kelp from them and then I get the fish emulsion from like Home Depot okay and then you put it in a five gallon bucket and mm -hmm. give each tree one bucket yeah pretty much pretty so much. I'll just I'll just do like a splash of each really mm -hmm. into the five gallon bucket and then dump it on the tree and that, you know, it takes a while, but. Once every couple months. Mm -hmm. How many trees do you have here yet? Do you know? It's in the 50s. Nice. I don't know how many of you have a little piece of dirt to work with, but this is not a big piece of dirt. Now it's bigger than you think because his house is big. He's got a 2,000 square foot house with two garages, but it's a 7,000 square foot lot. And- uh, It's not huge. It's not that big. And, but when you see what he did with it, it's just, planting close together creating he created a forest literally a food forest guys this is a yeah. a, a food forest in a couple more years <laughs> i mean maybe next year yeah he's gonna be having just abundant mangoes and look at this pineapple guava i mean pineapple yeah, guavans are really difficult to grow that here was one of the first things that we planted actually and that's been that was a three gallon it's beautiful as as me now. beautiful new growth that everywhere on slow, it slow, yeah slow, slow, slow. have that's you gotten funny. any flowers on it yet oh yeah Oh, cool. They taste so good. Oh, so have I've you heard. tried those yet? No, I have, a, yeah. I have one, but it hasn't flowered yet. Yeah, the first year we got one flower. Uh, and then uh, this last year we got probably about 15. That's um, awesome. But yeah, it really started growing this year because it was kind of really small and uh, not doing too much that whole first year. 
Which is like a lot of things. I think they got to kind of get their uh, their their sea legs. Yeah, man, this makes me happy. There's actually a really good vibe in this yard, not just because you're here just hanging out with me too, <laughs> but it's also because just the energy of these trees. I don't know if you, do you feel that? Yeah, no, I feel, I mean, just coming out here, take a breath, it's just refreshing and it's just absolutely feels, feels great. And then this is a sugar cane? Yes. So I stopped watering this about a year and a half ago and it just won't die. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so we got, we actually got one. You can see it's growing up through whoa that thing. it's kind of it might be kind of hard to show <laughs> yeah, the camera. There. but we basically bought this one cane from uh, food city just chopped it up and planted it and you can see over here it's just it's just growing everywhere have and you, i, have I you don't water it, it or tried it at all uh, so it, we looked it up and it's just a it's a pain to do it unless you have the juicer there's like a hand crank one even that one's like a couple hundred dollars yeah um, so it's pretty expensive. I mean, I think it'd be cool to do. Uh, so what I did is I kind of chopped it up, uh, chopped the outside off and cut it into like little like strips and I would like chew on it a little bit, but it was just a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's like, it was pretty, it was pretty cool, but, and these are pretty. pretty Might be able to plants. blend it up and then just strain the juice. Yeah. There's just, I think it's They're like super the, thick though and hard. The huh? hairs are like, mm. yeah, I don't know what it is, but. We tried a couple different things and it's a real big pain. Oh, you got a mango. What kind of mango is this? Uh, this is a coconut cream. Oh, awesome. So this was one of the first. Oh, look how deep it's planted down yeah, there so too. Th this is one of the first ones we planted. And so this is a, an early beginner's mistake that I made because <laughs> I didn't account for it's settling, right? Mm. So you can tell this is planted at least eh, three or four inches below everything else. Now, I mean, it's beautiful down there. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I think that's why it hasn't grown quite as much. And that's oh, yeah, that awesome. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's struggled more than anything. So I think that's. But it has. Look at these leaves now. I mean, yeah, it's it's looks, it's coming. It's coming back, it's especially coming. once I've exposed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this this one and the other loquat, um, they just struggle to. We'll put out new growth and it'll kind of like not look good and then it'll die off like you can tell right here so this is like see the leaf yeah kind of like like it put out new growth and then it died and mm. it's, i just feel like it's like suffocated or something you know maybe it's a little too deep that's <laughs> yeah interesting so that's what i noticed on my loqua too and they just will not grow very well looking or um very fast at all is this a loofah yes <laughs> That's amazing, just growing up in the Moringa. Yeah. Look at these. John Colder would be proud. That's funny. <laughs> look at, uh, look and at this. this. This is probably the best looking mango. This is a lemon meringue. Yeah, this thing's looking great. Yeah, I actually have to cut away the Moringa again. I had already cut this away from it. Why is it So do you have any advice for uh, people when they have a dirt lot and they buy a house if they want to plant some stuff. I would definitely say wood chips is, I mean, so key um, to a lot of things. I mean, it's good for the soil. Um, it's good for your water bill. It's good for the trees. Cause it also uh, maintains, it like insulates the ground, but it also maintains like a more consistent moisture. Mm -hmm. Cause even if you are just watering more and it keeps just drying out and drying out, like, you're not only wasting water, but you know, it's like, like I know seedlings, you know, you use coconut core in your raised beds to maintain a more consistent moisture, you know? And uh, so I think wood chips definitely help with that. Plus they're feeding the soil biology, which is then feeding your tree for you. So like, I expect if I were to just keep adding wood chips, eventually it's like, I have my own worm castings and bug, you know, stuff in the yard already that's just in a loop of feeding itself mm -hmm. like a like a real forest in nature would do it absolutely feeds, you know creates everything i think wood itself. chips are actually a slow release fertilizer right it's like more you put on they'll break down and you don't have to right. worry about how long a lot of people are like well they're gonna take forever to break down well that's a good thing right it's like the more you put on if they take a while and it doesn't really take forever actually yeah it's, <laughs> it's really fast it's really quick and you know between uh plus most trees are 
they like a fungally dominated soil so you got the mushrooms uh, decomposing the wood chips the bugs I mean it's all just good stuff that is going into you know your yeah food. We, we got mushrooms oh you guys got to see the rainbow eucalyptus too oh yeah so now we come out of the front yard and uh, we'll just touch on a couple before we hit that rainbow um, this bad boy it's got some beautiful new growth everywhere what is this that's the pink guava tropic pink three gallon it was yes <laughs> that was uh, on sale and guys, just special. look at these look at these wood chips like don't be afraid to pile it up when you think you have too much wood chips add some more yeah and uh, don't, do not have enough this is a neem tree neem tree yeah this was also you say this one grows super fast too yeah it grows really similar to moringa as far as the growth rate um, the only thing is it's more uh, frost sensitive but I mean in Indian culture it's used as toothpaste as like a cure for like 200 different ailments it's like in the medicine pretty much every Indian person will have one of these plants in their house or it's just like such an important and moringa, moringa they'll have too. moringa and neem yeah. probably well I mean they I'm pretty sure they uh, originated from India northern India right so moringa did yeah so I, I don't know much about neem yet I think but. neem too but I mean this tree is awesome and plus this one like moringa will pretty much top out at 25 or 30 feet but neem will get a lot bigger and it has a similar oh. taproot, I think, to the moringa. Awesome. So I'm not worried about having it, you know, eight feet away from the my house. And so I'm just gonna, I'm trying to get that thing to grow up. Yeah, it's kind of got a little tilt to it. Yeah, so it's good, because it grows so fast. So it's similar to a moringa, where it's growing away from the guava to get more sunlight. Oh yeah, it is. Look, it's, it's a polite tree. <laughs> so, it's... Growing, so, so it'll go out and then it'll curve back in to balance itself out. Like it's literally growing so fast that it knows that the guava or the guava is coming towards it. Wow. See, it knows that there's no sun there, and so it's curving out oh, yeah. to try and catch more sunlight. Wow, they really do have a mind of their own. Yeah. So, I'm not worried too much about the tilt because it'll grow out of it. It'll just have like so a you don't curve. you don't like to stake. Yeah, I try and take the stakes off as fast as possible. So like when they're young, like this, I still have staked a little bit, but I'll take the stake off the trunk, put it on the side and wrap uh, something that's nice, like the landscaping tape, you know, something that stretches that's mm -hmm. not gonna hurt the, the trunk. Because, I mean, in nature, there's no stakes, mm -hmm. you know, like these trees need to be able to survive, you know, the 100 mile per hour winds. <laughs> on their own. Well, no, maybe not 100 mile per hour, but. I mean, we get, you know, 40 to 60 mile per hour gusts in monsoon season, and it's yeah, still look standing. That. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's no stakes. It's only been, a, you know, 15 months in the ground. Have, has it flowered yet? It, mine has not. My buddy uh, has one that has, and it's the same, about the same age. Okay. Um, mine, I don't know, maybe I gave it too much nitrogen or something. I don't know. Like, getting the the amounts right because I know if there's too much nitrogen you won't get as many flowers or you can oh, have okay. like blossom drop and stuff like that okay I don't know a lot of the technical stuff because I'm not really like experiments you're right so I'm just trying to figure it out I just like feed it tons of food and you water it a lot is it like it I likes do, water right yeah I definitely water uh, a good amount oh and also the moringas I haven't directly watered in over a year like I just water everything else and they just, you know, they can figure it out. Soak it up. Right, because everything's pretty much within four feet of the Moringas. And I figured with their deep roots, they're catching any water that the trees, uh, that my trees aren't getting. <laughs> at this point, their tap roots gotta be at least it's got to be deep. half as deep as they are tall. Probably. Probably more. Potentially. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how we I, do that be, experiment, but I'd love to see be that cool one. Cool to dig up <laughs> this like edge one or something. Yeah, that would be. So be let's look at this guy up close. Stand up next to. It. I want people to see the scale of this thing. You planted this in a three. This was a three gallon. This was a three gallon, like kind of. It's kind of a whip, like probably about thickness. Of, This is about 
about how thick it was in a three gallon pot, the trunk. And it was about, mm, about as tall as I am. So it went to about maybe here-ish. But it was like this long, just thin, skinny whip, basically. And uh, that was about 15 months ago. And yes. it doesn't quite do it justice too because I'm standing on a couple feet of wood chips. I don't want to go stand in the tree well, but. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful thing. It is. So it's probably 15 easy right now. I, I'd say so, yeah. Maybe even more. Yeah, it just, uh, this, similar to the avocados, just started growing up, actually. Um, it was just kind of a big bush for the first year. It was, uh, you know, getting used to the wind and, like, being knocked around so much. You said the winds just came down right. and just, like... Yeah, especially this area of the yard, it's just like, I mean, this tree would literally be, I have videos on my phone from, you know, last, or summer 2016, uh, the monsoon season, and it was like sideways this way, sideways this way, sideways this way, just, you know, getting tossed around like crazy. Wow. But that makes it stronger, right? So now I have no stakes on it. Like if it was on a, like a tree stake the whole time, basically like a crutch mm, that makes know? a lot of sense because it the tree never has to get stronger to support itself because it's yeah. just like using the adversity makes it stronger there it is gardening is a metaphor for life guys remember that <laughs> <laughs> and there this jujube this green thornless is uh well it's yeah it, like he was mentioning earlier it's not necessarily thornless yeah, they call it thornless i think it has probably a lot less thorns than other varieties i've heard all these horror stories about people really not liking jujubes. And I've never tried like the classic Chinese ones, but this is a totally different species, actually. The Indian one. Uh, the Chinese jujubes and the Indian jujubes are actually two completely different. So by Chinese, you mean like Li and Lang? Right, Li, Lang, and I think there's like, you know, there's different like Sherwood and Honey Jar and all these ones. I think those are all Chinese because there's, it's a different uh, scientific name. And this right? is a uh, 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 Indian. This is Indian, right? So this is like I, the best way I can describe it is like a like a cross between a pear and an apple, and nice. with a, a little bit of a blander flavor. But it's sweet. It's really refreshing. Do you it's eat it crunchy or delicious. do you eat it uh, when it kind of shrivels? Uh, we let it shrivel a couple times. That was good. Um, if you catch it at the perfect time. But honestly, I like these ones better fresh. Straight off the tree, I would come out, I was eating like five a day at one point for like two or three weeks. Because there was, on this one tree, there was like probably 150. Wow. And they, were, they weren't as big as, they were like probably about that big. You know? That's pretty big for jujubees. I've seen some pretty small ones yeah, out there. Yeah, there's small ones, and some of them would get bigger than others, but man, they were delicious. Yeah, there's so many flowers. It was basically like a desert apple, I would say. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and they grow crazy, don't yeah. they? And they do a lot better than the regular apples that, that I have. That oh, I here's an apple. No, this these are apricots, actually. Oh, that's an apricot. On the far side, we have there's apples, but they really haven't grown that much. Let's take a trip on the sidewalk here. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, these were just planted. This is a, a cotton candy aprium and a gold-kissed apricot. Right here. That's the Barbados tree. Oh yeah, check out the Acerola. Which is like, you can see the Moringa just trying to shade everything out. See, it's like, oh, there's light there. <laughs> throw in there and choke out these other plants. Yeah. So, honestly, I just keep coming in and cutting it back and then we use the leaves and mm -hmm. make the Barbados cherry a little bit happier. Yeah, they, they don't mind full sun either. Yeah, exactly. So that might be partly why I don't get quite as many cherries. Um, because it's not in 100% full sun. Look at all these pods. Yeah, this tree in particular, this is a pod maniac tree. Like, ridiculous. Look, <laughs> Look at the size of this. Yeah, and super long, too. Was this a Jake Mace seed? Uh, this, these ones were, yes. Yeah, look at that. But oh for whatever gosh. reason, this one in particular just throws pods like it's nobody's. Like it's its job. So you got one, two on the road here. Yeah, well, there's actually, so this is a good example. So this 
so this is actually two separate ones. Okay. So I did this as an experiment to see, so you can see this didn't get quite as wide as this one. Oh. Because there's two planted right next to each other. Gotcha. And so this one obviously was the winner. Um, but I just never took this one out mm. and then so it was growing all kind of weird So then I just cut it to nothing basically a little Y mm -hmm. and then it just started throwing out these branches Oh, yeah, you know, you, I mean, that's why they call it the, the never die tree, right? Yeah, exactly. They do not die <laughs> Exactly. You gotta try to kill them. Yeah, so I'm sure but they're softwood. They're so easy to cut mm -hmm. I mean like literally even when I cut off the big branches like I'll be hauling like a 15 foot branch with like 10 leaves on it it's not even that heavy yeah it's soft wood so it's really easy to cut through if you really wanted to kill it it would be very easy yeah literally cut it put a piece of cardboard or something like because that's what people worry about it invasive or mm -hmm. you know all, all this work like if you don't want it to spread then it's really easy to take care yeah of. it'll grow however you trim it you can right. trim it down it's cut it down like every month if you wanted to right and it would still give you new leaves which i've been doing to maui but uh, what is this? This is a uh, mulberry. Yeah, Shangri-La mulberry. Shangri-La. Um, and I noticed so we get fruit off this one the first, and it's the first to go dormant usually. So you can tell it's still 100 degrees, but it's already throwing off yellow leaves. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Still throwing off new growth too. New growth, yeah. Well, I because I just cut it there actually. Okay. Because this was coming into the onto the street. But yeah, every time you uh, you cut these, it just starts new growth. And earlier in the season, you can get extra mulberries that way, I guess. Oh. Because, um, so the mulberries, they only grow on the new growth, right? The, the berries. And so throughout, after the first crop, if you cut a bunch of branches, it'll start new growth with new berries. Oh, how cool. On those branches. Well, is that like February, January? Yeah, March? I think this is usually the first one. So we're talking early February. When it starts to push out okay this one when this one breaks dormancy you know everything else is right behind ready <laughs> yeah um let's see so there's what a, do we got here oh moro yeah, blood that? orange that was just a little guy what um, is this here what is this okay one. so these are two figs oh this, it's a fig yeah so this is the violet de bordeaux okay what an interesting looking leaf yeah it looks totally different than like the, your standard fig right leaf. So now this, it's either a brown turkey or a black mission. I'm still not sure. Um, we've, they're both, the figs look kind of similar. I don't know. They Anyone taste pretty good? Knows for sure. Oh, they're amazing. But this, when I got it, it was a mystery fig because it, uh, Don lost the, uh, the label. <laughs> nice. So, but it was only 10 bucks. And this, so this tree was this size last year. Okay. At this time. So this is like year one, too. So yeah, it's like look at pretty that. much what you can expect. Coming all the way up here. Yeah, and even this is getting shaded up by the moringa notes. Yep. <laughs> so how many total moringas do you have in the front yard? Six? Uh, ten. 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 Okay. Ten. Yeah, it creates a perfect canopy. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. So that's one of your little entrances where you uh, load the wood chips in. Yeah. So you kind of walk right under here in the canopy. Yeah, so I have a couple different pathways, you know. And then, so and then it definitely drops quite a few degrees once you walk under here. Yeah, it's, cause there's, that's the thing about, uh, like the trees don't actually, it's not just shade, they're actually absorbing that heat, you know? So if this was just like a shade structure, it wouldn't be, it, the temperature difference wouldn't be as dramatic as with all these leaves that are like, you know, they, cause they almost are like swamp coolers themselves cause they're releasing water mm. or perspirating the water and absorbing the sunlight. So it's like even more than like a shade cloth. Yeah, definitely That's, more than a shade cloth. Yeah. And these things are up there. They are just reaching. Sweet. You want to go check out the bananas? Sure. All right. There's a millipede. Oh, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> I bet they're everywhere here. Yeah. 
That's from Jay's Soil. Nice. That's a Jay Behringer Millipede. <laughs> yes. Sure. I got them in my yard now. Because I, I never had those before I got Jay's Soil. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they're they're awesome. So check this out. Yeah. Uh, this is forest. And, and this trunk is like massive, massive trunk. And all these little pups are coming up now. I mean, the original tree was probably way back there, huh? Yeah, it's like kind of in this void. <laughs> oh, look at all those bananas. Oh, I stepped on a passion tree. Oh. Yeah, let's show. Let me see it. This is the little passion fruit here. You got that from the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers? Mm, yep. What's it called? We looked it up. Um, it's different. Uh, the, the regular ones you get from Lowe's or whatever are called Edulis. Passiflora edulis. These are Passiflora arida. It's A R I D A. Um, you got it mixed up in here among your loofahs. Yeah, the loofahs kind of winning the war, but they are still surviving, and they they feel the Gulf fritillary butterflies. They love to. Oh, here's a here's a uh, caterpillar right there. So usually people see this and they're all over it. People see this, they're like, ah, oh, kill it, kill it. Right, mm -hmm. but there's so this plant is so established now. Um, I was afraid it was going to kill it the first year, but it never. They never did. The regular, uh, the other passion fruit I had, the blue passion flower, th that just got completely decimated mm. by those butterflies. It, it's been two years now. We've had it and fruits and it's fine, and it takes caterpillars. And this thing is usually covered in butterflies. Awesome. Yeah, they're small uh, fruits, but they are delicious. They're really good. So and I highly recommend this one because I've had the, this is like good on its own. The other, the edgeless ones, the Fredericks or the whatever, um, it's kind of like more tart and it goes from like tart to fermented and uneatable, like quick. Yeah. So you can get them at the perfect time and they're still really good. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like I'll eat them in yogurt and. I'll even eat them fresh. Like, I don't mind, but these ones are like candy. Yeah, they are Straight sweet. On. They're very sweet. Yeah. And then so. these, all these loofahs that were planted right over here. Yeah. So this vine is, uh, so, you know, loofah is an annual, right? But last winter, we never got a frost. So this vine never died. So this is the second full year of growth. And I mean, this thing is like a beast. It's like tangled up in the wire. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then it's just <laughs> up. It's yeah, all this mulch. Yeah, so we it's a lot. There's a lot of dead stuff. We're gonna have to clear out. Um, Look at this loop. Yeah, I mean it's just ridiculous. <laughs> awesome though. Yeah, so we. I mean this one vine, we've harvested at least a hundred or hundred and fifty loofahs off it. Wow. Something like that. So I have a hundred inside. We've given some. We've given a bunch away. There's like 30 on it right now off of one plant. There might be like two two original seeds. Um, but yeah, it's great. And then the bananas. So yeah, so here's a nice big bunch of bananas. And you were mentioning that the flower down here, it just keeps blooming. Right, so after, after probably the flower got past about here, you can pretty much cut that off. Um, once you know that all the bananas have been pollinated, all the female flowers, <clears throat> this banana flower will just continuously make infinite male flowers as it, it'll just keep growing and growing. And so the, the, it's wasting a lot of energy. Well, not wasting, but it's spending its energy making male, useless male flowers instead of uh, ripening up the bananas a little mm. bit faster, which with winter coming, it's probably, especially now, a good idea that I should just you just cut off the stem right there and actually you can use the banana flower um, we tried to do it one year it didn't really work um, well we tried to do it last year actually um, but I guess you can make like some delicacy or something with it. oh sweet but it's a lot of work you got to like separate the flowers and stuff so yeah I like less really work personally on, yeah. on cooking anyway <laughs> just eat it raw right. so what is this bad boy that's a papaya that's struggling <laughs> Struggling now, but look at this trunk. It's, I mean, yeah. eight inches, nine inches in diameter. Yeah, that's at the bottom, probably even almost 11 inches in diameter. So crazy. Thing just took off. So there's that papaya, and it got hit by something this summer. 
Yeah, because it's, it's been getting plenty of water, I think. You know, I really don't know. Um, because it was just, it was like when we went out of town, we came back. I know it was watered. I just think that maybe it's getting too tall. So I want to, I don't know if that's it, but <clears throat> what I want to try and do is kind of cut it down. They'll live for multiple seasons, but they're not a tree. So it's going to die after a few years, maybe like three or four. Mm. Um, so that's why you just keep planting, planting seeds, which we have like thousands of seeds from these papayas. But um, I think if I cut it down, it might branch off. I know that's what Jay did and he was, had a lot of success cool. with that. So. Cool. Yeah, I mean, if that trunk's that. still alive, yeah. it'll push some stuff out, I'm sure. I mean, that's like 20 feet tall. Yeah, it's you know? up there. So, I mean, a good 60 mile per hour gust could just take that thing out. Right. Although it's tried before and it hasn't <laughs> fallen over yet, so. Uh, and look cool. at this, like, new leaf yeah. in the middle, all spiraled up. It just keeps going. Yeah, beautiful leaves. Beautiful leaves. Yeah, we've, wow. cooked, we've cooked uh, cooked with them. They're pretty. You good. cooked your the leaves? Uh yeah. Oh. So you use it like to wrap. Um, you can do like uh, like Hawaiian style, you know, pork or oh, or sweet. fish. Oh, um, You basically just use it as like a a wrapper, you know. Like yeah, and you eat wrapper. the wrapper too? No. Oh, you don't. You just kind of like a tamale. Yeah, kind of. Oh, like, okay, yeah. cool. So you use it like a corn husk. Um, yeah, I don't think you should really eat them. I'm, I don't think it would be bad for you, but I don't think they taste very good. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you just cook in them. Right. And you get like kind of a, cause you know, the leaf burns a little bit. Okay. And you get like a little smoky. Yeah. Nice. Leaf flavor or something. Sweet. Oh, it's pretty cool though. Well, you have a tropical oasis. <laughs> That's for sure. So he puts in a lot of work guys. You guys also, if you love gardens, you're going to put in the time, you're going to put in the work, but it's not really work because, well it is, it's physical labor, but it provides. And that's the coolest part about it is over years and years, you're gonna get more and more fruit. And that's why he loves fruit trees and I love fruit trees more than a vegetable garden, only because every year you gotta keep doing it. With a fruit tree, you plant it, you take care of it, and it does that. And it gives you just more bananas every year. Yeah. So, uh, and then the moringas are just, you probably can even see them over the house, maybe. I'm not tall enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful pod. <laughs> Just that purp moringa. This is the purple? The purple. <laughs> nice, that <dat> purp moringa at <laughs> Craig's. <laughs> Tropic pink guava, you can see the shadow. See the shadow right there. There's the tree. So this was uh, February 2016. Now I flash forward to October 2017. And there she is. <laughs> that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. So this was a seven gallon. This is the one we spent money on, this star fruit. And it died all the way to the ground, or all the way to the top of the graft and started growing back from the graft. Wow. In the 2016 summer. You can still see the, the guava in the background. Oh yeah, there's the tropic <laughs> pink. <laughs> yeah, just a oh desolate, my gosh. desolate canvas. Yeah. So I I basically soak them in purified water. Okay. For 24 hours and then plant them in the compost. Okay. That was the process. Awesome. This is the loquat. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, this yard has changed. So here's an example of a moringa that doesn't get enough sun. Oh. See, it, it's, not, it's not surrounded by another moringa. It's by itself. 
But look, it's in the center of this canopy. Mm. It doesn't get enough sun. So it's weak. It's falling over. I mean, it's still really tall. You know, most people would be like, look how amazing my Moringa tree looks. And this would be the one they're showing you. Right. But compared to your other ones. Right. But you can, you can tell, because this is as old as these. Uh, it's still about 15 months old. That's you can look as old as purple. Yeah, 